Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to a brief devotional from God's Word. This is a devotional from the Treasury of Daily Prayer to bless you as we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord and look forward to Lent, Holy Week, and Easter. O wondrous type, O vision fair, of glory that the church may share, which Christ upon the mountain shows, where brighter than the sun he glows. May the Lord bless your day. This is a daily devotion for Sunday, February 14th, 2021. Valentine, Martyr The New Testament reading is from John chapter 5, 1 through 18. After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the shepherd gate a pool, in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for thirty-eight years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed, and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, as there was a crowd in the place. Afterward Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And this is why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father is working until now, and I am working. This is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. A Writing of Augustine of Hippo a multitude of invalids lay on the porches under the five-roofed colonnades, and yet only one was healed while he could have, by a word, raised them all up. The real health of the body, which is looked for from the Lord, will be at the end, in the resurrection of the dead. What shall live then shall never die again. What shall be healed will never be sick again. What shall be satisfied shall never again hunger and thirst. What shall be made new shall never grow old. But at this time, however, the eyes of the blind that were opened by these acts of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ were once again closed in death, and limbs of the paralytic that receive strength were again loosened in death 
and whatever was for a time made whole in mortal limbs, came to naught in the end. But the soul that believed passed to eternal life. That water then, namely that people, was shut in by the five books of Moses, as by five porches. Those books of the law brought forth the sick, but could not heal them. The law convicted, but could not acquit the sinner. Accordingly the letter of the law, without grace, made men guilty, whom on confessing grace delivered. For this is what the Apostle said. For if a law had been given which could give life, surely righteousness should have been by the law. Why then was the law given? He goes on to say, But the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The five porches are the law. Why did not the five porches heal the sick? Because if there was a law given that could have given life, surely righteousness should have been by the law. Why then did the porches contain those whom they did not heal? Because the scripture has concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Christ Jesus might be given to them that believe. Augustine of Hippo Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you kindled the flame of your love in the heart of your holy martyr Valentine. Grant to us, your humble servants, a like faith and the power of love, that we who rejoice in Christ's triumph may embody his love in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Taught by our Lord, and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Valentine, Martyr A physician and priest living in Rome during the rule of the Emperor Claudius, Valentine became one of the noted martyrs of the third century. The commemoration of his death, which occurred in A.D. 270, became a part of the calendar of remembrance in the early church of the West. 
tradition suggests that on the day of his execution for his Christian faith, Valentine left a note of encouragement for a child of his jailer, written on an irregular shaped piece of paper. This greeting became a pattern for millions of written expressions of love and caring that are now the highlight of Valentine's Day in many nations. This has been a brief daily devotional provided from St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Caseyville. We pray that these devotionals be a blessing to you in your walk with Jesus. O oh, Father, with the eternal Son and Holy Spirit ever one, we pray thee, bring us by thy grace to see thy glory face to face.